How's it going, guys? Difficult question for mixed cardiopulm slash MSK that actually shows up on the family medicine forms for 2CK. But of course, these answer choices high yield for step one as well. So before we get started, please subscribe my channel. I really appreciate it. Good video like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. The link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now let's start the clip. 35-year-old man, one day history of, of sharp stabbing pain in the left lateral chest. Pain resolved spontaneously on its own after 30 minutes, but has recurred five more times. Three days ago, he had a sore throat and a headache. Vitals were within normal limits. Cardiac examination, chest x-ray, and ECG are all normal. Laboratory studies show elevated creatine kinase. Question wants to know the most likely explanation for these findings. So three days ago, the sore throat and headache sounds like upper respiratory tract viral infection. Let's walk through the answer choices. Choice A, I'm paying my wrong fucking answer. This is going to be pus in the plural space. That's almost always a sequela to a pneumonia. Okay, it could be iatrogenic, patients had surgery, for instance, but it's usually a pneumonia that leads to an exudative pleural effusion, referred to as a para pneumonic effusion. And as the pH drops within that fluid below 7.1 ish, uh, it becomes frank pus, and we call that empyema. The low pH of the fluid below 7.1 ish. Very fucking high yield. That's the highest yield detail you need to know about empyema. Uh, they might tell you on surgery for 2CK that a patient has a fluid in the pleural space, it's aspirated, it's milky in consistency, the pH is 7.45, and that's going to be chylothorax, not empyema, in addition to the fact that empyema is a sequel of infection, as I just fucking said. It's the wrong answer. Choice B, pericarditis. And in addition, you'd have a, you'd have a, a high fever with empyema, okay? The vitals are within normal limits here. Choice B, pericarditis, wrong answer. Now, whilst pericarditis could occur uh, as a sequel to uh, a simple viral infection, a serous pericarditis, the ECG is normal, okay? Uh, Yosemite will give you diffuse ST segment elevations uh, on ECG for pericarditis. Don't confuse that with an MI, which would be ST elevations in a few contiguous leads, okay, such as 2-3 AVF or uh, V1 through V4 as examples, but pericarditis, STLs, ST segment elevations diffusely in most of the leads. Uh, a lot we can talk about here, you should know, not just viral infection, but autoimmune disease, such as rheumatoid arthritis and lupus can precipitate pericarditis. Uh, that's serous pericarditis. MI can cause fibrinous pericarditis within a couple days of the cardiac event. And then uh, that's, that's just called post-MI fibrinous pericarditis, and then two to six weeks later can become Dresler syndrome due to antibodies. That's also fibrinous pericarditis. It's the wrong fucking answer. Choice C, pleuridinia, is our correct answer. Now, despite the name, this has nothing to do with the lungs, okay? This is lateral chest pain due to viral infection, often Coxsackie B virus. This is intercostal muscle spasm, okay? which the increased tone of the muscle can liberate creatine kinase, okay? Creatine kinase can be elevated when we have increased muscle tone, various conditions. I've seen it in panic attack where a patient uh, has elevated creatine kinase because uh, they're clenching. Uh, there's a uh, question with ALS, so amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, where you get UMN, LMN lesions, and uh, the UMN findings increase muscle tone, sometimes elevated creatine kinase. So intercostal muscle spasm secondary to viral infection, uh, sharp lateral chest pain, uh, obscure diagnosis called pleuridinia, uh, nothing to do with the lungs, but it's asked on the family medicine forms for 2CK, not my fucking opinion, okay? I'm not trying to be fancy here. It's asked on the NBME, so I have a responsibility to communicate it. Let me just quickly hop through some high yield points regarding some of the other, other answer choices real quick. Pneumothorax, wrong answer. You just need to know a spontaneous pneumothorax, generally a tall, lanky patient who has a rupture of subapical bleb, and that will be an ipsilateral tracheal shift. And sometimes if they're small, they can self-resolve. If larger, you're gonna do needle decompression followed by chest tube. Uh, if there's trauma, especially you can get tension pneumothorax, which would be a contralateral tracheal shift, low blood pressure in a patient. There's obviously more we can talk about, but pneumothorax is the wrong fucking answer. Choice E, pulmonary embolism, wrong answer. I mean, of course, patients' risk factors, if they have hypercoagulable state, uh, sedentary, they've been in hospital post-surgery, uh, if they're on uh, smokers after the age of 35 on uh, oral contraceptive pills, all right? So we're going to have acute onset uh, shortness of breath with tachycardia, and uh, patients will be given heparin, of course, and you do a spiral CT to diagnose most of the time, VQ scan if patient's pregnant. Wrong answer. 
tamponade wrong answer, you need to know that this simply refers to pericardial effusion plus low blood pressure. That's what a tamponade is. Uh, the biggest risk factor for a pericardial effusion becoming a tamponade is acuteness of the accumulation of the fluid, not the volume. So if a patient has a stab wound to the chest or an MI with a left ventricular free wall rupture, uh, there can be acute rapid accumulation of fluid around the heart, uh, which can cause a tamponade, even if low volume. If you had, let's say, a cancer causing six months slow accumulation at large volume, it might not be a tamponade, just a simple pericardial effusion. You're going to get Beck triad in the question for this. So hypotension, muffled heart sounds, JVD, classic, pulses paradoxus as well, a drop greater than 10 millimeters of mercury in systolic blood pressure with inspiration. So we're going to do pericardial synthesis or pericardial window for this. Uh, echo to diagnose if both are listed. So echo first, then you're going to do the pericardial synthesis or pericardial window. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel and I appreciate your time. That's it.